The size of space is so staggeringly enormous that it is quite impossible for the human mind to grasp it. Also, vast expanses of space will for the most part never be explored and clearly defined. Even though in the past several millennia man has learned to analyze the build-up of the nearest galaxies, there still remain areas in the cosmos which are practically impossible to observe, let alone actually reach. One of these areas is intergalactic space a mysterious part of the universe lying hundreds of thousands of light years away in complete darkness. Cosmo. The first in outer space. Predictably enough, the term intergalactic space is generally used to refer to parts of space between galaxies. It is believed that certain portions of these areas are practically devoid of any matter which makes their composition quite close to that of absolute vacuum, with some of its areas stretching as far as millions of light years in all directions, intergalactic space is for the most part filled with ionized gas. Generally, this gas is hot hydrogen, whose density here is 10 times less than that in interstellar environment, namely less than one atom to one cubic decimeter. There are also heavier elements to be found here as well, like carbon, oxygen and silicon. Some part of intergalactic gas is concentrated in clouds differing from each other very much in terms of density and temperature. Interestingly, the chemical composition of their gas is diverse. It may contain atoms of hydrogen, helium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur and various metals. It is this gas that more likely than not feeds stellar formations in all galaxies. There are also much larger objects to be found in intergalactic space. For example, stars were spotted there quite recently. The total number of intergalactic stars in the observable universe may reach several trillion. Within the Milky Way alone, Around 650 of these rogue stars have been pinpointed so far. As a rule, intergalactic matter doesn't emit any light and is mostly invisible to the potential observer. That is why its discovery was actually made by pure chance. It all started with quasars, which were discovered in the 1960s. Very soon, scientists noticed that the light from the quasars had certain missing pieces in some spectra. These particles were absorbed by something in between quasars and astronomers' telescopes. It later transpired that this invisible matter was the gas of the intergalactic medium, the IGM. In the decades that followed, vast accumulations and filaments of gas and heavier elements were discovered in intergalactic space. And even though at first glance it appears to be empty, its dimensions are so mind-blowing that there must be more matter evenly distributed around it than there is matter in all the galaxies of the observable universe combined. It is safe to assume that some part of intergalactic gas has been left out there after the hypothetical Big Bang. Still, as there are heavier elements in its composition, it may only mean that many of these elements used to be part of interstellar dust lost by other galaxies, Intergalactic gas actually plays an important role in the process of the universe's evolution. Under the influence of a galaxy's gravitational pull, gas is gradually sucked into galaxies at the rate of one solar mass a year, which is quite close to the rate of star formation in the disk of the Milky Way. Apart from that, matter exchange among all galaxies occurs thanks to this process. The point is that stars in a given area of the universe collapse and release part of their matter in intergalactic space. Having been released, the matter becomes part of intergalactic gas and so later takes part in the processes of star formation in other galaxies. Consequently, star formation in galaxies will not stop while there is still intergalactic gas around pulled by gravity. A substantial portion of intergalactic gas is matter remaining after supernovae, which is why temperatures in some areas of intergalactic environment are extremely high, sometimes reaching as much as several million degrees Celsius. 
The high temperature of some areas may also be accounted for by electromagnetic radiation emitted by intergalactic black holes following matter accretion on their surfaces, or else by powerful streams of energy emitted by still more massive black holes. Intergalactic gas plays the role of raw material in star formation, while intergalactic space is some sort of a tank used for its storage. The mechanism of intergalactic gas recirculation hasn't been studied deeply enough. First of all, because unlike galaxies, which are bright and easily seen, this gas emits no light to speak of. In their attempt to study this phenomenon, astronomers have devised supercomputer Foggy. Foggy models the patterns of intergalactic gas movements, and it is possible to observe how gas traveled around galaxies in the course of 13 billion years. Most of this matter is carried to intergalactic environment by stellar wind, that is thanks to the process of matter flow from stars to areas beyond their galaxies. It should be mentioned that this occurs when particles in a star's atmosphere accelerate to speeds exceeding the escape velocity of this star. Stellar wind is crucial for stellar evolution. As a result of this process, the mass of a star diminishes and the intensity of this process has a direct impact on this particular star's lifespan. Also, stellar wind is capable of carrying matter enormous distances through space away from its departure point, as it were. Moreover, it may have an impact on matter around it by sharing some of its kinetic energy. Results of this process may be clearly observed in the shapes of some galaxies or nebulae. For instance, the emission nebula NGC 7635, nicknamed Bubble, assumed its shape as a result of this process. And in the case of galaxy M82, also known as the Cigar Galaxy, we can observe how stellar wind from a great number of stars caused clearly seen matter ejections from the galaxy. Apart from the debris left over from supernovae, there is also intergalactic dust to be found in this environment. Today, it is posited that it is intergalactic dust that is to blame for jinxing estimations of distances on the intergalactic scale. For example, when supernovae, quasars or other galaxies are being observed. Among its many properties, it is capable of forming clouds. By 1980, Four such nebulae had been pinpointed within several megaparsecs from the Milky Way. As for intergalactic stars, they are rather difficult to detect and explore. Some of them have been spotted in the X-ray spectrum with the help of the Chandra X-ray Observatory. Many of them are binary systems made up of one regular star as one component and one compact heavy object like a black hole as the other. When such celestial bodies lie close to each other, the more massive component attracts matter from the regular star. While flowing to its new host, matter spirals away from its source to form an accretion disk. This disk compresses and heats up to extremely high temperatures, and as a result, it does not simply become luminescent, but starts emitting X-rays. It is next to impossible to spot most objects of this kind using regular telescopes, Meanwhile, rogue stars inhabiting voids may eventually prove to be quite a common thing, rather than something extraordinary. And perhaps about half of starlight is actually emitted by stars lying beyond the boundaries of galaxies. It is hard to tell how big their number may be. And today it is barely possible to imagine that man will ever visit those places. Objects lurking in those mysterious parts of space may be of considerable interest to science. And who knows, perhaps it is intergalactic space that will be scanned with all telescopes by scientists in a few centuries' time. Still, for now, this environment is just another mystery of the universe quite beyond our reach at this point. It is places like this that really thwart our ambition to completely figure out space and its properties. And it is places like this that drive us to take keen interest in how it all works.